Hi everyone, it's Doug from Jamie's staff and we have started putting together a few little screencasts like this about things we like to do when we're taking pictures in case uh, they might be useful to somebody else. So th these are going to each cover one topic. This is the first one. I'll get to the topic in a minute and I uh, just want to let you know these are general focused on people who use DSLRs, digital cameras, the, the ones with interchangeable lenses and flashes and other accessories. That's what I use all day long, so it's what we know the best, and we don't really know the options with compact cameras and things like that um, quite as well. So, so these are going to be for DSLRs, and uh, this first one here, we're going to take a look at how to take pictures like this one. And what I mean by pictures like this one is um, pictures in which there's action in the foreground that we want to freeze, so we want a fairly fast shutter speed but there's a really bright background and we want to make sure that everything's balanced so the dogs look nice and the background looks nice too. And for these situations, the, the short answer, the one sentence summary of this whole video is whenever it's real bright out, use flash. And that's kind of counterintuitive for most people. You think, well, flash is what I use when it starts getting darker and there's not enough light. You know, when the sun's out there, the sun lights everything up, it looks pretty. And that's true. However, the sun shines from a particular direction. And at any point in time, the sun is where it is. And depending on where you are and your pets are relative to the sun, uh, you might get kind of a harsh direct light. You might get a backlight where they look kind of dark and silhouetted. Various things can happen that you don't really have control over. So by using flash, you kind of smooth out all of those details. And it just means that what's in the foreground is always going to be pretty well lit. Even if you're shooting directly with the sun, you'd think, oh, the flash will overpower things, way too much light. Today's DSLRs are all smart about that. They'll figure that out. Use a short enough shutter speed or whatever it takes to make sure that that doesn't get overexposed. So basic principle here, always use flash when you have bright sunlight or bright background. And shoot into the sun whenever possible. So this right here, I spend an ungodly number of hours taking pictures of Jamie and Alice. And taking pictures of Jamie and Alice, most of the time, if the sun's out, what I'm doing is constantly dancing around trying to keep them between me and the sun. And I've got a flash on, and I've got a wide-angle lens, and that's what I'm doing. That's how we get shots like this one here. That's what's going on. And so I just keep shooting and shooting and shooting. And this here is an example of three different shots from within the next few seconds before that photo right there. And you see, none of those are quite as great combination of, of light and texture and other things. And just shoot, shoot, shoot and see what happens. And one thing that is a big variable here, as I'll explain a little later, is how far away they are from you when you have the flash. That makes a big difference. And and I don't generally try to figure that out ahead of time. I just take lots of pictures and you find, oh, okay, today it looks like about 10 feet away they look good. And, and that's just a thing you can kind of calibrate based on what's going on. So flash options. I put this in a blog post recently. Some of you may have seen about lens shadows. See down at the bottom how there's a shadow cast by the lens, the big wide angle lens for each of these flash options. And long story short, that SB400 in the middle, that's become my favorite flash I've ever had. That's what I use for pretty much everything. On the two-week trip we just got back from, I had that on and turned on pretty much all the time that I was taking close-up action shots of the dogs. And I didn't have that big lens that you see there. I use a slightly more streamlined lens. That's a whole other topic. So here's some examples of this shooting into the sun with flash concept. Look at the top picture and look at how well the side of Jamie's face is lit. You can see his teeth and his tongue, the color, the detail. Everything looks pretty good. And yet we're shooting straight into the sun at a uh, little before sunset there. That's Puget Sound from the Normandy Park area. Photo down at the bottom is the same day. It's just a slight different angle. You can see the lights kind of quartering from the right on them. But because I'm using flash, I light the side of them closest to me, and, and they look pretty good. And so I'm, I'm letting everything be automatic. I'm using my Nikon in program mode. I don't remember what Canon calls the same concept. But the idea is I'm not making any decisions or thinking about any numbers. All I'm doing is just shooting pictures and trying to keep the sun on the other side of them. And then this here, this is a more dramatic shot where the sun is setting and there's cool color and texture in the sky. And, and so this is a great example of what can happen. I've lit the dogs with the flash in the foreground. So the dogs look good, but we also have that great looking sky in the background. Whereas if we didn't have flash, here's the two options we'd have. 
get the great looking sky in the background, which is probably what would happen by default, and the dogs are kind of dark silhouettes down below, or expose it in such a way that we get the dogs looking great, they're exposed properly, and then because that takes a much longer shutter opening than would be necessary for that nice brightly lit sky, the sky is washed out. We don't see all that cool color and texture. It's just kind of white and burned out. So flash lets you balance all that so you get the best of both worlds. And then another thing that's going on here in this particular shot, I held the camera upside down. That flash lens shadow business is, is casting a shadow on the sky where it's not visible. So by doing all that, I got a shot here where over to the right, you can see the trees are nice and dark and silhouetted. They look the way the trees really look under those circumstances. I could do an HDR shot, high dynamic range, where we take this photo and process it at multiple exposures, merge them all together, and then it would look quite similar to this. It would look great around the dogs and the sky and stuff. But over there in those trees on the right, you'd actually see the detail in those trees, which wouldn't feel right. Those pictures look phony. Something doesn't quite feel right, because if you were there with the naked eye, those would be kind of a dark silhouette against the sunset. So everything in this looks realistic. It's a realistic looking photo, and that, that's part of what you get with the flash in the foreground. So um, these two, a couple more examples from that same location, actually. And on the left, the sun is so damn bright that it's just overpowering the flash. So Jamie is still a little bit in shadow, but that's kind of okay here. You know, it's a nice moody sort of thing. Jamie at sunset, no big deal. It's not like he has to be perfectly lit. And then on the right, um, here we have Jamie standing in the water, and there's this brilliant, you know, reddish-orange sunset behind him. A couple things to note here. Taking it with flash, I mean, frankly, it doesn't look real. Jamie's lit too bright there. So if I had time to take this a few times, I might spin the flash level down. There's a setting on my camera for that. Most DSLRs can do that and just adjust your flash compensation a bit. Typically turn it down a bit here so he's not so brightly lit. Another thing that's not good about this shot is look at his eyes. See how they're kind of burned out. He has that red eye thing happening, white eye in this case. So we can fix that in Photoshop, or if we had a flash that was off camera so we could hold it further away from the camera, we could probably avoid that. But those are little things to watch for when you're taking these flash shots into a bright background. This shot here is an example of if you're out and about in the trees and bushes on a bright sunny day, you have these shafts of light shooting through everything interspersed with shadows. And frankly, that looks bad. You end up with this high contrast light, in particular on a white dog, where you have alternating spots that are burned out and you can see no detail and look really dark and gray and ruddy and not like um, the true Sammy white color. So a flash kind of smooths all that out. So here these dogs are uniformly lit and that's okay. It's kind of smoothed out. Um, here's some examples from the road trip we just took the last couple of weeks. You'll notice on, on most of these photos, if you look close at the shadow, you see the shadows pointing towards me or almost towards me. That's because the sun's behind them. So this is a great example of what I do all day. I'm dancing around trying to stay on the opposite side of them from the sun and take flash pictures. This is kind of um, what's going on when we're trying to take these action shots. Now, another um, concept here, or rather the same concept applied in a different setting, is if you're indoors or, say, in the car and you have a bright background, then flash makes the foreground lit at about the same level as the background, and you get both. You don't have a dark silhouette in the foreground, and then cool color in the background, you have it all. So here we have great detail, like that one on the right, in Jamie's eye and nose and everything. You can really capture every nuance of his expression. And also, you have a blue sky and a river that's blue and, you know, nice color in the mountains and trees in the background. You can also use this indoors, of course, same concept. There you don't have sunshine, right? But you might have bright lights all over the place. So top left, that's a hotel room recently, and that's just, you know, aim right at the light, put the light right behind her, and then shoot a flash shot. You get that great color and everything in the foreground and in the background. Lower left there, that's an example of doing it with the sun. Same concept. So here's four shots from Jasper a couple of weeks ago on the way up to Yellowknife. On these shots, we were lucky enough to have the sky develop into a really cool sunset with those bizarre rays coming over the mountains and stuff. Just spectacular background. But it's the same basic concept, flash shots into a bright background. Now, why do those look so good? Uh, it's kind of an interesting question. And there's a few things that come together when you balance it out like this. Because the flash balances the exposure, then you get good color and detail in both. 
And also with flash, you have more light, so you freeze the action more. So the faster shutter speed freezes the action. And then also kind of a, a side effect of the, the first one there is because you have everything at uh, such a nice balanced exposure that's appropriate for both the foreground and the background, you end up with a situation where you have good texture and detail in the shadows, that is the, the side of the dogs towards you, as well as in the background up above. So uh, they just tend to look better this way. Flash fall off. Here's a basic concept to understand. A lot of smart people give this a lot of thought. I don't pay any attention to the technical details myself, but there's ways you can calculate how quickly the, uh, the light from your flash falls off. And so if you want to light the dog that bright three feet away, what do you got to do to light it that bright 10 feet away? But the basic concept to understand intuitively here is that the further away your subject is, the less light your flash is going to throw on them. So in this case, you can see how Letty up front is just perfectly lit. The flash is kind of locked onto that and done the right thing for Letty. And then Jamie in the background isn't getting very much light. He's within the range of, you know, where the flash is shooting, but you can see it's hardly getting to him. So that's a concept when I mentioned earlier, kind of coming up with that sweet spot distance each day, depending on how bright the sun is and what's going on and what color your dogs are and everything else, there'll be some distance at which the balance just looks really good. And what I typically do is then set my, my autofocus to that distance, set it to manual. So if, if six feet looks good, I set my, my focus to manual focus at six feet, and then I just keep trying to get them between me and the sun six feet away and fire, and just keep doing that, and uh, eventually something cool will happen. Now, here, here's an example from our recent trip of a shot that uh, it has a very dramatic look. A bunch of people commented, I think this might be the most light shot of her whole trip. And, and, and it should be, frankly, in my opinion. Alice looks just freaking spectacular against a great sky and great mountains. You know, you can tell she's in a cool setting. Just all works great. And I kind of like the leash dangled there because this is good Alice, the one who will stand there with the leash dangling and not go run away or do something crazy. So anyways, um, what's going on here is I have flash, I have the wide angle lens, and, and she's a little further away. So she's not being like, if you compare this to that last shot of Jamie and Letty, Alice is not lit as well as Letty in the shot. See, she's, she's a little more in the shadow. Now, that's okay. I think it all works because the background's so bright. But, but that was one thing that wasn't ideal. And then I'm turning the um, wide angle lens sideways so that that lens shadows on the left. Because if you look in the left center part of the photo, that stuff's all a long ways away. The, sh the shadow won't reach them. And so by doing that, I wound up where kind of that area there roughly is where the shadow is for my lens. But that's not affecting the shot in any way at all. And, and so it kind of all hangs together. Um, we don't have that to deal with. Don't have to crop that out or do anything. One final concept for you. So the shooting with flash into bright backgrounds. I think it's a very cool thing. It's something I do a lot now that I've kind of explained what we do. If you're one of the people who follows Jamie's photos, um, I feel like if I do a few of these videos, you're going to know all my tricks and then I'm done. It's not like I have a whole bunch of them. And this is one. I just do this over and over and over and it works pretty well. You get some very cool shots that way sometimes. But if you look at this photo here, here's a photo that does not have the flash going off. And um, what happened here, I, I remember this fairly well, is I took this photo with the flash on looked at it on the camera and I thought it looked phony or fake. It didn't look as cool as what I was seeing with my own eye. So I turned off the flash and snapped this and I really like the feel of this and the way it all works. Sure, they're not lit perfectly and bright white in the foreground, but it looks great. So, so I guess I just end this little video with everything you do in photography is kind of a subjective, you know, what do you think looks cool today? And, and in this case, this technique of keeping the flash on at all times when there's bright backgrounds, when you're bright sunlight, I, I like doing it, but uh, don't hesitate to turn it off too. You can, uh, you can do a little too much. So I hope that helps you have a few ideas about how you might take better pictures of your pet. And uh, do let us know if there's things you want me to talk about here um, related to taking pictures of pets. As I said earlier, it's what we spend all our time doing. We might as well share.